Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Now NHL, local experts weighing in on the biggest stories on the ice. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. We're going to recap the playoff action with all of our Locked On NHL hosts from Monday night, but we start off with the Avalanche finishing off a sweep of the Predators in last night's biggest game. The biggest game. The Colorado Avalanche made it look really easy all series long against the Predators, and now Colorado is sitting pretty with plenty of time to rest after finishing the sweep against Predators in Nashville. Our Locked On Avalanche host looks ahead to the next round after dominating the first test of the postseason. All right, break out the brooms. The Colorado Avalanche for the second year in a row sweep their first round opponent. Last year it was the St. Louis Blues. This year it is the Nashville Predators. And for the first time in this series, the Avalanche trailed about halfway through the third and they just methodically tied it and then took the lead and then add an empty netter and the Avs are on to round two. We talk about how dominant this avalanche performance was by only giving Nashville four minutes of the lead the entire series. This is exactly what you want to see out of this avalanche team from beginning to end. Like this is one of those teams that, you know, is built for the playoffs and they showed it in this series, handling business, coming back and taking the series in Nashville. And while the avalanche stars stepped up the entirety of these, these four games, Nashville's were really nowhere to be found, maybe with the exception of Matt Duchesne, who played pretty well. But other than that, you didn't really see them. And I know voting is over for all of the awards, but I think there's some voters who maybe did not vote for Kale McCarr that are probably kicking themselves in the butt saying, I probably should take my vote back. Obviously, they can't do that, but man, he was in control of this series from game one to the end of game four. What a performance from him. What a performance from Nathan McKinnon, Devon Taves. I mean, you could go on and on. Everybody that needed to step up for the Avs did, and it showed out on the ice. So uh, the round two opponent will be the Blues or the Wild, depending on who wins that series. But it's going to be a nice, long week of rest for the Colorado Avalanche. The Predator season came to an end on Monday and Locked On Preds looks back on the year and looks ahead to what is in store for this team in Nashville. Where we've seen the Nashville Predators set and break records tonight, the Preds marked yet another franchise first. This is the first time the franchise has been swept in the playoffs. Hi everyone, I'm Ann Kimmel from Locked On Predators. The Nashville Predators have had all they could handle and more in this first round matchup against the Colorado Avalanche and tonight's game four, no exception. The Predators were much more competitive, had their first lead of the entire series at one point, but lost this game five to three. There were a few bright spots in the night. Yakov Trenin had two goals. Philip Forsberg also showed up finally on the score sheet with a goal. And for the most part, the Predators stayed out of the penalty box and were able to play five-on-five hockey, which gave them the best chance to appear competitive against the Avs team. Unfortunately, this game and this series ended much the way it went on with a Nashville Predators player in the penalty box watching the Colorado Avalanche score a power play goal. Even though this season has seen record-setting performances from Roman Yossi, Matt Duchesne, Philip Forsberg, Mikhail Granlin, this very poor postseason performance is going to have many people in Nashville taking a hard look at the franchise and what direction it is headed. There are going to be a lot of off-season questions And the biggest one on everybody's mind tonight as the Predators say goodbye to their 2021-2022 season, is this the last time we'll see Philip Forsberg in gold? Three goals in the third period lifted the Flames to a win over the Stars on the road and evened their first round series at two games apiece. Locked on Flames tells you how Calgary caught fire to avoid that 3-1 hole. We have ourselves a whole new series here. Hello everyone, I'm Jess Belmosto of Locked on Flames, and the Flames take game four and are now the series is now tied at two apiece, and Johnny Gaudreau's uh, penalty shot goal was the game changer 
that was the confidence and the momentum that this team needed to get their offense going and sparked. It is like someone poured a little gasoline through a match and the flames were going. Uh, four nothing, or sorry, four one win over the Stars tonight in Dallas, and you know couldn't ask for much more of a game from them. They were really going at it on all angles, and goaltending was great, defense was great, offense was there, offense was finally there for this team, and it was just so nice to see. And for the Flames to keep Ottinger busy during the first period with 20 shots on goal was exactly what they needed to get the ball back in their court and to take this series back and make it theirs. The Stars had a chance to push Calgary to the edge with a win in Dallas, but couldn't hold off the Flames late in their game on Monday. Locked on Stars diagnoses the problems after the defeat. The Dallas Stars showed some of their bad habits from this season in game four of their first round matchup against the Calgary Flames, and it came back and bit them in the worst way possible. Hey, everybody, Dane Lewis here with the Locked on Stars podcast coming to you after the Dallas Stars 4-1 to loss in game four of their first round series matchup. And it just felt like it was only a matter of time before we saw this version of the Dallas stars come out in the postseason. season, uh, three pretty solid games up to this point. But then in game four, we saw pretty much all of the, the worst things about this year's Stars squad come to life, really bad zone entries and exits. The Dallas stars struggled to get the puck out of their own defensive zone. And, they were just getting absolutely worn out by the Calgary Ford check and spending way too much time on defense and then not having any energy on the offensive side of the ice because they spent too much time using their energy to play defense. And then even on the power play or the five on five, the Dallas stars could not get set up in their own zone. Some of that due to the defensive fatigue, but also just some sloppiness with the puck and sloppiness with, with their passes and, and just their, their overall offensive management uh, and efficiency was just not there tonight. Um, I think we'd seen a pretty good style of play through the first three games of this series, but it just wasn't there. And, and Calgary, with, uh, with some help of some questionable calls from the officials, as well as a pretty good performance from Jacob Markstrom, get the win in Dallas and even the series up at two apiece. And so now we have a best of three series to close this thing out. And I think the next team that gets to win, so the team that wins game five, is likely going to be the team that wins this series. And the momentum has now shifted back to Calgary's side. So Dallas has a ton of work to do if they want to continue to be competitive in this series and eventually come out with a win. Well, we'll talk about this game in its entirety on Tuesday's episode of Locked on Stars. We'll see you there. The Florida Panthers tied up their series with a road win over the Capitals last night, and it took overtime for the President's Trophy winners to get the job done against the Capitals, but they did. And Locked on Panthers now comes back home with the series tied at two. It is now a different series as the Florida Panthers tie this series with the Washington Capitals all tied up at two. What is up, guys? This is Armando Velez from the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. And the Florida Panthers defeat the Washington Capitals by a final score of three to two in overtime. This is a game where the Florida Panthers fell behind a little late in the third period with a possible missed uh High hit by TJ Oshie on Sam Bennett that created an opportunity going the other way. But after the Florida Panthers blew a one um, one nothing lead and the Capitals went to score the next two, the Florida Panthers came back with the floor, with Andrew Burnett pulling Sergey Bobrovsky, bringing in the extra attacker, and the Florida Panthers score six on five. The other goal by the Florida Panthers was four on four with. Ekblad and Verhage going two on one, going the other way. And got to give credit to Andrew Burnett for mixing up the forward lines and defensive pairings, putting everything in a blender, just surprising Peter Laviolette on the other side of things for the Washington Capitals, definitely throwing off possibly his game plan going for Washington. So on this edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, I'll be bringing in Octavio Sequera, Spanish play-by-play -play voice, to discuss this 3-2 to two win over the Washington Capitals. Vamos Gatos. Alex Ovechkin and the Capitals, no strangers to high stakes hockey and Washington will need that experience as it now has a best of three to keep its season alive. Locked on Capitals tells you how Washington corrects the mistakes before game five. Hello, this is Dan Holmey from Locked on Capitals. Well, the Washington Capitals fall to the Florida Panthers by a score of three to two in overtime. 
And the story of this game was the Capitals were simply not getting enough shots on net. Shot attempts are 69-36 for Florida through the end of regulation. So that was the biggest part of this game is that Washington just wasn't peppering Bobrovsky with enough shots. And then the thing that really changed and turned the tide for the Florida Panthers was when coach Andrew Burnett pulled his goalie with 309 left in the game. You know, I was watching that game and I'm thinking to myself, you guys are only losing by one goal. Do you want to be losing by two goals? Rarely does it work in a situation like that to pull your goalie that early by only being down with one goal. But given credit where credit's due, it really paid off for Andrew Burnett and the Florida Panthers as they go on to win game number four. Kuznetsov says in the third period, it was everything in our hands. Eventually, that's how it is. We're going to play best of three right now. There is no panic. So the Washington Capitals hope to turn it around, and they hope to get more shots on net. Uh, The Washington Capitals overall played pretty well. Uh, There was kind of a boring game for the most part. It was a low-scoring game, but the Capitals hope to turn it around as they play the Florida Panthers for game number five on Wednesday. Keep it locked on to Locked On Capitals, and I will keep you updated on all the news on your Washington Capitals. Locked On Capitals, your team every day. The Pittsburgh Penguins now holding a commanding 3-1 lead after beating the Rangers at home big time in Game 4 on Monday. Locked on Penguins tells you how Pittsburgh got a game away from moving on, while Locked on Rangers tries to find a way to save New York from the brink of elimination. 14 goals in two games against the Rangers. What In this economy, like, what world are we living in right now? Hey everyone, I'm Hunter Hodes here with the Locked On Penguins podcast as the Penguins dismantle the New York Rangers again. And they have taken a commanding 3-1 series lead. They, t- they chase the future Vesna winner Igor Shosturkin for the second game in a row. He has given up nine goals in his last two games to the Penguins after coming off a regular season where um, he basically never had two games in a row like this. The Penguins, they will have a chance to eliminate the Rangers on Wednesday, a complete performance will be needed, just like how they played um, today against the Rangers. And you know, this is it's it's put up or shut up time for the Rangers. The, the Penguins, I think, are going to get their very best on Wednesday. They will have to be prepared for it. But a tremendous performance by the Penguins tonight. All four lines contributed. All of the defensemen contributed. Louis Demay had a stellar outing, and the Penguins are 60 minutes away from their first playoff series victory since 2018 for more on the pittsburgh penguins you can check out the locked on Pe- locked on penguins podcast with me hunter hodes wherever you get your podcasts hey what is going on hockey fans it's john chick flocked on new york rangers the rangers basically just run out of the building tonight in pittsburgh losing seven to two and now trail in the series three games to one it's a situation where you know i, I know at least some fans are, are looking at igor shesterkin and wondering what's going on with him and to be fair yeah i mean he certainly has not had his a game he's not been anywhere close to the goalie that uh, he's been for this team basically all season, and even the first two games of the playoffs as well. But to me, the far bigger issue here is that the Rangers just basically have forgotten how to play team defense. Uh, and you got to give some credit to the opposition. Obviously, you know, the Crosby line has been wreaking havoc the entire series, but uh, overall, you know, the Rangers having all kinds of issues. They just seem completely discombobulated every time the puck is in their zone. Nobody knows where they're supposed to be. Nobody knows who they're supposed to cover. They can't get the puck out of the zone. You know, they take icings all the time. It's just, it's not a winning formula in the playoffs. And right now, uh, you know, another big issue that I'm seeing, once again, the shift that immediately follows a goal. It seems like every time a goal is scored in this series, whether it's the Rangers or the Penguins, the Penguins always come back as the sharper uh, team and, you know, creating scoring chances, if not scoring goals immediately after that. So the Rangers, you know, they score, they can't really build on it. Or if the Penguins give one up, they're almost giving up another one or indeed are giving up another one as they did in this one tonight. So just not winning playoff hockey tonight and backs against the wall, still not giving up. You know, the Rangers have been a resilient team all season. We'll see if they can pull off a win at in uh, Madison Square Garden, Game 5, keep this series going. But uh, we will definitely be talking about Game 4. A lot to say about this one in the next episode of Locked On New York Rangers. Do not miss it. That's all for today on Locked On Now NHL. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. Make sure you check out Locked On NHL and your team's Locked On podcast. I'm Kanani Stevens. This has been Locked On Now.